Hello, this video is on remote access to cameras. The purpose of this video is you tried to use our network IP cameras 101 video on our BlueWire support page. So let me go to that first. So on YouTube, our BlueWire support page, you tried our network IP cameras 101 video. And for whatever reason, no matter trying all the tips and tricks that we provided, you still cannot connect your cameras. And so this video is how to provide uh, internet access to your cameras so that BlueWire support can get access to them from, the, from a browser and then try to determine what the problem is between the connection between your cameras and Blue Iris. So keep in mind when you open up a port on your router to get access to your cameras, i.e. port forwarding, um, that's all great for a support perspective to make it easy. However, there's a major security and privacy risk associated with doing so. Anytime you put a device accessible from the internet, other people can break into it and could cause major privacy uh, concerns to you or your organization. And therefore what we re recommend is after we are done troubleshooting and resolve the issue, um, the instructions we provide for port forwarding, go to your router and delete those ports so that your camera is no longer accessible from the internet. Okay, so the first thing that needs to be done is finding out the IP address and ports for the camera that's causing problems. And the easiest way that we found to do so is to use Advanced Port Scanner. You can download the software from advanced-port-scanner.com. I've also provided a video link on YouTube to a short tutorial on how to use Advanced Port Scanner. And if you go to YouTube, scanning your network for open ports is a, a short three minute video on how to use Advanced Port Scanner. So once you do so, Basically, you get a list of all the devices on your network. So you find the IP cameras causing concerns, identify the IP address for the camera and the ports that are available for that camera. Some cameras may only provide one port. Others may provide as many as three ports. So getting that information is very important in order for us to help troubleshoot your camera. So once you have those two pieces of information, the IP address and the ports, the next thing you need to do is this topic called port forwarding, which is basically telling the router any requests from those ports, like say your camera has 80554 and 8999 open. How do you tell your router to forward any requests from the outside world for those three ports to go to the camera that's causing issues? And so the first thing you have to do is find the IP address of your network router because you need to talk to it. Just like cameras have web servers, the routers also have a web interface in order to configure that device. So the easiest way to do so, to find the IP address for the router is going to remote access wizard. So let me go to Blue Iris, go to the remote access wizard, go to the second, third, fourth page, fifth page, and then there it is, routers address. So just take the local area address because you'll be work, you'll be at home when you're doing this or on the network where your blue iris is located and your camera is located and then you copy that address. Actually, you can just click open. It'll open up a browser page. And this is the landing page of my router, which is an AT&T router. Another easy way and a common way of getting access to your router IP address is using a command called ipconfig. So go to the command prompt, type in ipconfig, and the default gateway is the router address 192.168.1.254 that matches exactly what Blue Iris said was the address for your router. So what do we do so far? Just to make things clear, right now we're connected to your router and now we're gonna give instructions on how to forward the camera ports to the camera in question. Which brings us to our second step. From your Chrome browser, go to the router IP address, find the previous step, which is what, what we just did. Now I'm gonna tell you the instructions on how to configure my router. However, every router is gonna be different. 
and therefore I'm just telling you conceptually what we're trying to do. And I'm gonna show you specifically how we do it for my router, but your router may be a little bit different. And another good resource we found on the internet is a website called portforward.com. This gives you details on many routers and how you do port forwarding on those routers. So let me show you how to navigate to my router, for example. So I'll go to the port forwarding guides. And then my service is with AT&T, but the manufacturer of my router slash gateway, I have to look at the in the back of the device and try to de determine what the make and model is. And so what I found out when I looked at the back of my device was it was a PACE route, gateway slash router. So you go to PACE. And they'll try to sell you software, but you don't have to purchase anything. And then my model is 5268 AC. And then with that piece of information, they give you details on how to do port forwarding on UCI says at and UVerse for the PACE gateway. And you'll see the exact same screenshots when I go to my router. So port forward is a good resource to find out specifics for port forwarding on your router. So now let me explain how to do port forwarding on my router. So I'm gonna my I go back to my router, I go to the site map, and I go to the firewall settings. So port forwarding is part of the firewall. And what you see currently is all the ports that are open today. So for my Blue Iris server, I've opened up port 7000 for uh, remote access. Now I have another device on my network. It's kind of cryptic, but this is actually a high vision camera. And I've opened up ports 554, 8081, and 8000. This camera is no longer on the network, but it used to be. And so today I'm gonna to show you how to open up another port. Let's call it port 8999, which is a default port for Anvi. So how do I open up port 8999? And so what, let me just go back to diagram to clarify what I'm doing. I'm going to the router. I'm gonna open up port 8999, which is the default Anvif port. And so this router after I'm done will be instructed for any request from the outside world for port 8999, forward it to the camera that I specify. Okay, so let me go back to the router. So this is the camera that I want to receive port 8999. So what do I do? I go to applications, pinholes, and DMZ. Keep in mind, your menus and settings may be completely different depending on who your manufacturer is. So the first thing I do, I need to do is create a new uh, port 899 that I need to eventually open uh, to my Blue Iris server. I mean, to my camera, sorry. So I'm gonna go to user, I'm gonna add new user defined application. This is again, how I do it on this router. So I'm gonna call it Anvif and it's a TCP uh, protocol. I'm gonna say port 8999 which is this typical Anvif port, 8999. This Hike Vision camera does not have Anvif support, but if it did, it could be an 8999. I'm gonna leave the other things by default. And then basically I'm gonna tell it to create a virtual private network server. And then I do add to list. Let's take some time, does a little bit of thinking. Successful. <clears throat> So what did I just do? I opened up port 8999 on the router, but I haven't told the router where to send that traffic. Who gets that request from port 8999? So I'm gonna create this connection now, right here. Okay, so I go back to applications and pinholes. I select my device, which is the camera. There it is. And then I'm gonna 
filtered by user defined ports. There's Anvif. So my camera is still selected, as you can see. And I selected Anvif, which is 8999. And add it to this camera. Now it's thinking again. Successful. So now if I go back to status, you see 8999 listed as an open port on this router and is forwarding it to my camera, which not which is not online right now. So that's port forwarding. And so what you'd have to do is for all the ports that are available to the camera can be as, as low as one, as high as three, do that same step, tell the router to forward those ports to that camera. And then you we then we can get access to it from the internet and help troubleshoot. Finally, another test to see whether port forwarding is working correctly before you uh, send the email to us to help troubleshoot is can you see me.org. It's a great site um, to, to confirm whether ports are open. Can you see me.org? So based off of the the machine you're in, you can um, <coughs> do port forwarding tests. So like if I do a port forwarding test for port 80, I know it's not open. So if I do a check, it's going to time out and say error. Error. However, I know that I opened up 7,000 for my web browser, my Blue Iris web, web browser, that is. So if I do 7,000, success. So that's another way you can easily confirm whether you've done it successfully before sending the request to us to help troubleshoot. Okay, so that's port forwarding, real easy. This is how you provide access to your cameras on the internet. Once you're done, once we're done configuring it and troubleshooting it, don't forget to delete the open ports from the router afterwards so that there's no, no other future issues or hacks uh, can occur. Thank you very much. Remote access to cameras, uh, tips and tricks.